gonna get the day started with uh, some alligator time. Isn't that bones crushing, right? Oh, Gabe! What do you say we just dive in? Oh, I'm nervous. I'm more nervous about these eggs than I am my eggs. They could turn around on a dime and just bite you. And I tell you what, I've been bitten by D. Albert plenty of times. It's not a fun bite. I just, just squeeze it. I can't. So much power. Oh, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the vlog. Oh, and by the way, at my. New Anaconda sleeping with me last night. She is such an absolute bleary. Well, we're actually gonna head over to Noah's Ark and see some amazing animals and have a great day before we head back to the Reptarium with my new Anaconda. What do you say we have a great day together and get on the road? All right, so we made it to Noah's Ark with my buddy Charlie over here and we're gonna get the day started with uh, some alligator time. Let's see what they'll do. There you go, buddy. There you go. There he goes. Good job, bud. Way to go. Oh, what a beauty. Come on, buddy, up here, up. <laughs> what a little cheeky monkey. All right, there you go, there you go. Open. There you go, sweetie. You're such a gentle girl. <laughs> I love alligators. What an awesome animal. Oh my gosh, it's so cool. I just, I could do this every day. I love it to death. Okay, we'll see if we get one more piece of her and then we'll move on to some other animals. Come on, up, up. Good job, girl. Way to go. That's enough fun with alligators. Let's go see what else is going on here. Of course, we're gonna be checking out the bears and the tigers and lions and stuff like that. The thing I love about Noah's Ark here, and again, I always say, if you're in the Atlanta area, you gotta come visit these guys, pay them some love, uh, is their big enclosures. Every one of these enclosures is about an acre all the way up to three acres. The animals have tons of area to roam. And that's the thing I love about places that are really like this, that give the animals tons of space. It's super cool. Wow, I love it. I love coming here and getting a chance to feed these guys. They are savages. I love them to death so let's go ahead and give you guys some treats you ready there you go buddy oh yes yum 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 there you go bud you ready more here you go isn't that amazing oh my gosh that is so awesome i love the way they lick it as they're chewing too you know it's so cool listen to that Isn't that bones crushing, right? to see those tigers and the bears and stuff like that. But we're actually gonna see a really big snake here in a little bit too. Still a lot left to see here. Remember my buddy Gabe? Hi buddy, hi sweetheart, how are you doing? I know, I know, I missed you too. How are you doing? Mm, you're such a good boy. How you doing sweetheart? I know, you're so cute. I know, <laughs> what are you doing sweetheart? Oh my gosh, Charlie, I love Gabe. He's a cool guy. Oh he my really gosh, is. and I know he's been your buddy for how long? Oh, 35 years-ish. 35 yeah. years. He's been around for a minute. Oh my gosh. Charlie, I didn't know you were 35. No, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, right. What are you looking at? Not. What are you looking at? <laughs> <laughs> Gabe, he's just getting some little goldfish. Gabe, it's okay. It's all right, buddy. What do you like it? You like it? Can we share? <laughs> I love this little dude. What's up, buddy? Here, here, you don't have to squeeze. Here you go. There you go, bud. I'll hold for you. Let's go. Let's I'll hold that. for you, baby. <laughs> oh my gosh. He is so adorable. The things I absolutely love is that Gabe uh, loves driving. And so we're gonna go for a little drive around the park with Gabe uh, at the helm. <laughs> Isn't it nuts? 
Doug was Gabe, the most amazing animal ever. I absolutely love him to death. We're actually gonna go head over to the snake place, take a look at some snakes, of course a really big snake, but first I think we're gonna cut a clutch of eggs, a clutch of ball python eggs. What do you say we had over there? I'm pretty excited my buddy Charlie has a clutch of eggs. It actually came for me. It's a lemon blast head for sunset, bred to a spider and she had sunset. There's six eggs, it's a one in four shot to get a sunset. So with six eggs, we're hoping and praying that he hits a sunset. It's cool that I get to come down here and still get a chance to cut some eggs. So that's pretty cool. What do you say we just dive in? Oh, I'm nervous. I'm more nervous about these eggs than I am my eggs. What the heck? Like, at least with me, it's like I don't feel like I'm responsible. Oh, there's one little head cutting. So, okay, so first egg. All right, what do we have? What do we have? Uh -huh. It looks like maybe just a pastel, possibly a pastel Enchi. Maybe a pastel Enchi, because it's pretty nice, actually. Definitely not a sunset, though, but Let's see what we got. And I saw a couple heads sticking out of this egg and another egg. Didn't look very promising that they were sunsets, but hey, I looked at one animal that looked pretty promising. This again, looks like probably just a pastel or maybe a pastel enchi. <laughs> Charlie, our odds are not doing so well. All we need is one sunset. Come on, and it's everything changes. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh my gosh. Looks like just a normal enchi in this one. Oh my goodness gracious, the odds are not in our favor here. But I tell you, there's this one egg right here that I'm pretty excited about because it looked really goofy. I saw its head. So I think we have one shot at producing something pretty special. I'm sure hoping at it. This one is just a pinstripe. Just a pinstripe. Oh my goodness gracious. Uh, Charlie, Charlie, you're never going to let me cut eggs again. <laughs> I mean, come on now. All right, we've got two more eggs. Like I said, I've got really high hope for the one. Let's see what we got here. Okay, so this one looks like a spider enchi. So it looks like we got a spider enchi. So we've been kind of missing the big eyes, but this is the one that I saw its head and I thought, ooh, that looks pretty unusual. So I am excited to see what is going on with this one. Come on, be a sunset. Be a oh, it's not a sunset. It is an absolutely beautiful snake though. This actually looks like a spinner enchi. So it's a spider, it's a pinstripe, and it's an enchi. But oh my God, I'm so bummed. I'm sorry, Charlie. I screwed. Like he come down here, he was excited. We we're gonna share, like we we're gonna celebrate tonight if we produce sunsets and uh, well, we didn't hit the sunsets. Do you have more clutches? You win some, you lose some. Definitely miss the odds on this one, but uh, Charlie has three more clutches coming. So we are gonna definitely hit a sunset over here. As for now, uh, that wraps up the egg cutting on my travel adventure. So you guys know that I have a Gielbert's Python that is super, super docile. This is what normally they act like. Not nearly as docile, but it's absolutely a beautiful animal. I mean, just take a look at this D'Alberts python right here. Mine is a puppy dog and you can handle it like you can't be. You can see this one has definitely got a very defensive. It's very much moving, like in a way that it's ready to come back on me anytime. But I'm starting to get a little bit with it. And that's basically how I typically handle pretty defensive snakes, is I wanna just let them feel as comfortable as I can. I'm not gonna restrain them at all. I'm not gonna try to get them to do anything they don't wanna do. And if I can just slowly let it climb around like I'm a branch, it's gonna be happy. But trust me, I've been working with the Alberts for a long time. They could turn around on a dime and just bite you. And I tell you what, I've been bitten by the Alberts plenty of times. It's not a fun bite. They've got some pretty big teeth, but what a gorgeous snake, huh? Take a look at this sucker. Woo! Oh my gosh. Woo! Tell you what, that thing is gorgeous. My goodness gracious, what a gorgeous snake. And again, it's one of those things that when I first picked this up, I thought for sure 
I was going to be leaving some DNA samples with some blood for sure, but it seems to actually be doing really well. And again, the whole idea of these guys is just to go ahead and act like a tree. And sometimes they'll actually go ahead and cooperate with you pretty well. That's a girl. Wow. What an absolutely gorgeous snake, huh? The thing I love about Charlie's place is I get to mess with lions and tigers and we see bears and we see all kinds of cool stuff, but then we can come play with some snakes, including some ball pythons. Take a look at this one here. This is actually an orange dream Mojave yellow belly cinnamon. I mean, look at how absolutely incredible. I mean, it's just a lot of genes and it makes for an absolutely gorgeous snake. This one is not only absolutely gorgeous, but it's really a powerhouse when it comes to genetics, right? So basically this is a super gravel. Now the gravel and yellow belly make the highway ball pythons but because they're allelic of course you're going to get yellow bellies and gravels when you produce highway stuff this is a super gravel meaning that everything it produces will be a gravel so if you bred this to anything say super yellow belly everything is going to be highway so when you start mixing a bunch of different genes into the super gravel or the ivory stuff you can get highway stuff that has all kinds of cool genetics so it looks cool but i tell you what from a powerhouse standpoint this animal is incredible i always talk about the fact that sometimes you don't need five or six genes to make an incredible animal this is just a two gene animal right here. This is actually a cinder lesser ball python. So the lesser is relatively common. The cinder is a new mutation that's a co-dominant mutation that hasn't been out for so long. But when you mix those two together, ooh doggy, I tell you what, that is one stunning snake. Remember those purple snakes I produced that were actually cypress animals? This is a cypress animal too, so it does a lot of really cool stuff. This is actually a pastel hypo cypress animal. So you can see that's just an absolutely gorgeous mutation. Again, three genes, one recessive, two co-dominants, and it makes for a stunning animal. This one is crazy. This is actually a pastel granite vanilla inferno. Now the inferno is the hidden gene Woma bred to a lesser. So there's all kinds of different genes in this, but look at how busy it is. It kind of looks like a GHI, but there's actually no GHI in it, which makes it really super busy. So that is one stunning snake and uh, it's something I have never seen before. Awesome. I always love this snake. I mean, this is definitely one of my favorite types of snakes. There's like the urban camo. This is actually what they call the gray matter, which is a super black pastel champagne. For whatever reason, when you get into the super black pastel, super cinnamon pastel, and even sometimes just the cinnamon cypress type stuff, you'll get these kind of white bands, almost like a piebald ball python. And this one really looks like a pie because look at it, it's about 40 to 60% white. But the fact is there's no piebald in this. That's what's so amazing. For some reason with that champagne gene mixed with black pastel or cinnamon pastel, especially the super version of it, you get these huge white blotches. I tell you what guys, that is unbelievable. And that wraps up the ball python section of this vlog. All right guys, so we are going back in with the emus and Rhea. You might remember that Rhea is uh, named Steve and he wasn't exactly a fan of mine. Uh, we also have our ostrich over here, which is pretty crazy. Let's go ahead and go inside and check it out. And if you remember last time, this little dude here, which is a Rhea, these are all emus, of course, ostriches over there. This is actually a Rhea. He actually was not very good and he wanted to fight me last time. So we're, we're I think we're gonna become friends today. Hey Steve, what's up? Steve, what are you doing? Look at these guys. Is this absolutely incredible? I mean, look at these. I love the little noises they make. It's so cool. Hey guys. And of course, it's awesome to see the emus like this that are pretty big birds, but then take a look at the ostriches. Certainly, one of the things I really wanted to come down and visit with was to see my girl, Grandma. Oh my gosh, she is so big and she is so heavy. That snake is insane. I tell you what, until you hold something this size, you really can't appreciate the power of an animal like this. I mean, she is just a huge snake. And I am so tired of just kind of wrangling with her. She is a lot of snake. She is heavy. She's about at the brink of how much I can handle. Oh my God, now she's, she's squeezing it. I can't, so much power. She's just trying to hang on, but her hanging on. Literally, oh, she's got poop too, okay. There we go. There you go, girl. There we go. Woo! I tell you what, I'm gonna need a nap. We've got a long drive ahead of us to get our anaconda back home. But handling a snake this size, literally 20 plus foot, at least a couple hundred pounds. This girl is even larger than Lucy. 
and she is amazing. I mean, this is definitely one of the largest snakes I've ever handled in my entire life. Oh my gosh, she's insanely large. So heavy. There you go, girl. There you go. There you go, sweetheart. There you go, sweetheart. Oh my gosh. Whew. I tell you what, look at the size of her head. That just tells you how she's not a young animal because that head will grow as they get older. But she's just pushing me around like I'm a rag doll. I tell you what, if anyone gives you the opportunity to hold something this size, definitely take it because it is an experience. What an amazingly beautiful snake. And it's again, just goes to show you, big snakes aren't killers, right? I mean, look at how unbelievably docile grandma is. I could basically do almost anything with her and she's not gonna do anything. I could travel all over the world and look for the largest snake that I could possibly handle. Right now, this has to be the top one or two for sure. I love this animal to death. And I just love the fact that it's docile enough where you could do anything to it and you don't have to worry about getting bitten. Can't wait till Lucy's getting close, but Lucy isn't quite this big yet. So I think it's time to go ahead, and move grandma back home into her place. Cause my time here has been amazing, but I'm definitely wore out. How awesome has this been guys? I love it here, this is amazing. Okay, let's pack up, get on the road, all right? Well, that was pretty amazing guys. I had a great day with these guys and so many of these other animals. I hope that you enjoyed it. It's time for me to get my anaconda and head on back to the Reptarium. If you enjoyed this video, here's another video of me holding giant snakes. Here's an entire playlist right there. If matter of fact, if you want, can you subscribe right here, turn this post notifications on. Have a wonderful day, be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you guys tomorrow.